Our next objective has us returning to integrating uh, de indefinite integrals. And this time we're going to take a look at more complicated derivatives and how to integrate them. Uh, we've worked with the reverse power rule. We've also worked with integrating the trig functions. But now it's time to take a look at what happens when the derivative we're trying to integrate is a little more complicated. We're going to use a technique called U substitution to help us integrate those complicated integrands. Uh, before we get to that technique, uh, it might be helpful to revisit the chain rule uh, so that we can look at the structure of the derivative and it will help us identify those things that we need to, to integrate these complicated derivatives. So as you can see on this worksheet, it's titled Notes U Substitution. Although we're not going to be using U substitution, this is an introduction that will help us understand that technique. Looking at the seven problems that we have here, you can see that we have an integral and we have a blank uh, of dx, a differential of x, and that answer is equal to the square root of 5x cubed plus c. So if we're trying to figure out what belongs on this blank right here, you might be thinking, well, if this is the antiderivative, which it is, then let's differentiate this antiderivative to get the derivative that belongs on this blank. So in these seven problems, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be taking these answers, differentiating them, and putting the answers on the blank as the integrand, the derivative, if you will. All right, so let's take a look at this antiderivative right here. All right, it's going to be helpful for us when we differentiate it to rewrite any radicals with rational exponents. So I'm going to start first by rewriting this. All right, so we know that to proceed to find the answer that belongs in the blank, we need to differentiate with respect to x. So bring in the derivative operator. And of course, with all of these problems right here, the derivative of any constant is going to be zero. So we're really focusing our attention on this part of the answer. All right, differentiating here, let's return to the chain rule. We see that the outside function is 1 half, and the inside function is uh, 5x cubed. So the derivative, using the power rule and chain rule, derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. All right, we still have uh, more calculations to perform, and that would be this right here. And this derivative, if we kind of pause and look at it, it's just going to be the basic power rule. So this will be 15x squared. All right, we could do some cleanup on this. We could rewrite it as 15 halves. Since all of this is being multiplied, it's okay to multiply a half times 15. I'm going to go ahead and bring the x squared factor in next. And I'll be left with 5x cubed raised to the one, a negative 1 half power. Okay, we could rewrite this um, as a fraction with uh, the square root of 5x cubed in the denominator with 2, but I wanted to kind of leave it like this so that we can kind of look at what we have here to help us with uh, u substitution. If you're going to be into integrating something that looks this complicated, um, we probably see that this derivative came from the chain rule. And what we need to look for is inside functions whose derivatives are present as factors. Meaning if you look at and identify this as an inside function to an outside function, is the derivative of this inside function present as another factor? And you really want to kind of look at just the linear pieces here. Okay, or sorry, the variable pieces here. Okay, so if we looked at this x cubed and just kind of put that on hold in our brain, that 5 for a minute, if you looked at x cubed, if you were to differentiate x cubed, you're going to get an x squared factor, and that's present here. All right, let's look at this next one. To differentiate, it might be helpful for us to rewrite this. 
You could use quotient rule, but it might be easier to rewrite it as a negative exponent. Okay. I would try that route first. I would take any negative exponents and perhaps rewrite them as positive exponents. So what does this derivative look like? That's what we're proceeding on on this problem. All right, differentiating this composite function, the outside function is the uh, power function, x to the negative 2. The inside function is x squared plus 6. So using the chain rule, times the derivative of the inside function we see that the derivative of the inside function is using the sum and difference rule where the derivative of x squared is 2x and the derivative of 6 is just 0 do a little cleanup over here. I see that I could multiply negative 2 times 2 and get negative 4 times the factor x, and that's going to leave the quantity x squared plus 6 to the negative 3. And let's just leave it like this for right now, meaning let's not rewrite this with the positive 3 exponent in the denominator. Let's not create a fraction. Because what I want to do is just look over here. If this is something we're going to be asked to integrate, okay, what we want to try and identify is perhaps an inside function whose derivative is also present as a factor. And if we just concentrate our attention on the inside function here, x squared plus 6, that being a quadratic, the derivative of a quadratic is going to be a linear function. And that's what this x is right here. The constant multipliers don't really have an effect right now. We really want to focus our attention on the variable factors. So more about that later. Okay, let's look at example three. easy enough. I didn't have to rewrite any radicals or um, exponents as negative exponents. So let's just kind of study this. How would we proceed finding this derivative? Well, it's very clear that we have an inside uh, cubic function and the outside function is a power function. So using the chain rule, we'll use power rule for the outside function, leaving the inside function alone. times the derivative of the inside function. Okay, and looking over here at finding the derivative, um, the parentheses are just there to kind of keep it together. Um, we don't have a power outside power function, it's just the sum and difference rule where we find the derivative of each of the terms. So this is going to be times 3x squared plus 4x. Okay, and so I'm going to come over here and rewrite. I could factor out an x here, uh, but I'm just going to leave it for what we need to do. I'm just going to leave it the way it looks right here, maybe putting uh, this first as our first factor. And the exponent here is 1, but that's not necessary to write. All right, so if we study this for a bit, um, this one might be a little more difficult to figure out uh, here in the, in, the, in the next video how to integrate it. But uh, what I kind of look at is I look at this quantity here, this parentheses, and I notice that there's a cube. Uh, and I think, well, that's the highest exponent that, that's in this uh, derivative. So what would be the derivative of the cube? Well, that would be a quadratic, which is present here. Okay, this, this exponent is a square, so that derivative would be a linear, uh, and that's present here as part of this factor. Uh, and the derivative of a constant is 0, which is good because there's uh, not a constant factor here. 
So one of the things we're going to have to be able to do is, given a derivative, identify, um, I guess, what's the inside function and uh, what is the derivative of that inside function present as, as another factor. And uh, it certainly appears that that's the case here. Just trying to get our minds wrapped around how to proceed when we look at the technique of uh, using u substitution to help us integrate. Okay, for example four, I'm going to rewrite this uh, radical as a fourth power. And then to find the answer that belongs on the blank, I'm just going to differentiate. Okay, uh, using the chain rule, the outside function is the power function, so we in, uh, differentiate that first. Reduce the exponent by 1, it becomes negative 3 fourths, multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. Uh, to save some space here, I think I'm going to go over here. You're probably comfortable because all that's left for me to do is differentiate using the sum and difference rule uh, this quantity right here. So I'm going to differentiate that and then also put it over here on the blank at the same time. So I've got the 1 fourth here. I'm going to find this derivative, 3t squared plus 1 would be this derivative, and then I still yet have this quantity here. Okay, and so before proceeding, let's just kind of look at, look at this. If we were asked to find an antiderivative for this complicated derivative, again, first thing you might want to look for is look for any powers. That's a good way to begin. I see a power here. Look at the inside function on that power. Is the derivative of that inside function present as another factor? And it is, because this derivative produces this factor right here. Okay, let's turn our attention to some trig functions here. All right, let's find the derivative of this trig function here. It is the chain rule. The inside function is linear. The outside function here is a trig function. So we're kind of changing gears. The outside function previous to the, this problem, the outside function in these previous, previous examples were always power functions. So when we went to differentiate the outside function, we were using the power rule. Right? Well, here we have a trig function. So the derivative of the outside, which is secant, is secant times tangent. So leave the inside function 5x present. So we have secant 5x times tangent 5x times the derivative of 5x. All right, to save some time in writing, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to finish finding this derivative and then put the answer over here on the blank. So the derivative here is 5. We're done. Let's just rewrite the rest of the problem. All right, so in the future, when we're going to ask, be asked to integrate this derivative, we might want to first of all look at secant tangent. And in our memory, we just have to remember that secant tangent is the derivative of secant. So the outside function here is going to be a trig function. So we look at the inside function 5x and we think, well, is the derivative of 5x present? And it is. It's right here. All right, differentiating to find the answer for this problem. Okay, we have to study what's going on here. The outside function is a trig function, and the inside function is quadratic. So the derivative of cosine, the outside function, is negative sine, leave 3x squared alone, and then multiply by the derivative of 3x squared. All right, so this derivative will be 6x. So I have 6x here times a negative 1. So I'm going to have negative 6x 
times sine quantity 3x squared. So as, as we look at this, if this was our derivative that we were trying to integrate, okay, um, I do see a power function square here, but it's not on the outside as if it's an outside function. So 3x squared belongs as an inside function to sine. So if I look at the inside function 3x squared, is its derivative a linear function present as another factor? And it is. So I'm just trying to get you guys to think about um, ways to identify how to proceed using our u substitution technique. All right, our outside function is a trig function. This is our inside function, the derivative of cotangent. So we have to kind of dig back in our memory and think about what those derivatives are. Well, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, so the derivative of cotangent is going to be negative cosecant squared. Leave 6x minus 8 alone, but we will end up multiplying by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative here using the sum and difference rule is 6. I'm going to multiply 6 by negative 1, so I have negative 6. And I still have cosecant squared quantity 6x minus 8. So if we're going to integrate this function right here, we see a trig function. It does have a power on it, but we need to be very comfortable with the derivatives of our trig functions to be thinking that, well, cosecant squared is the derivative of uh, negative cotangent or cotangent and so if that's the outside function this is the inside function and its derivative is present as a, as a factor. So this worksheet was just to help us put our minds around what do complicated derivatives look like and ways to identify um, pieces of that derivative that's going to help us um, when we go to integrate using u substitution.